Welcome! Let's see what's new in 2021.3. Here is the first feature to show today. Closures in base language can be generated into Java Lambdas. Now look at this piece of code. It creates an instance of a closure here and passes it as a parameter to the compute method. Now in the previous version of MPS, the code that gets generated for this looks like this. So a new instance of a function types class is created and passed around. In the new version of MPS, well, a Lambda is generated. So we avoid creating the instance with all the consequences it comes with. Now, obviously there are limitations. Not all closures can be generated into um, a Java Lambda. For example, if you've got a colliding variable here, now MPS, well, the generator reverts to the previous way to generate code for such closures. Nevertheless, I think this is a very important addition. Now it's time for some version control system improvements. The first one I want to illustrate relates to wrapping code. So, well, if I introduce some wrapping into this piece of code, let's say I wrap this with a block statement, and I might wrap this line with some if statement. This change structurally changed the code quite a bit, but version control can, can, can still make sense of this and show you the wrapping operations like here it tells you well this has been wrapped you know three statements have been wrapped by a new statement now this if also wrapped one statement so wrapping is nicely highlighted for you it's important to mention that this functionality worked to some extent in the previous version but it could not handle nested wrapping operations correctly now, while we are at it, the tooltips that showed up have been enhanced as well. So now if they contain links, you can click on them. If they are large, you can scroll them. And also you can actually restrict the amount of text displayed in the tooltip. So if you're not interested in the actual number of uh, numbers of commits, the, I mean, the revision numbers, now you can turn those off and now the, the messages get considerably shorter. The same set of changes showed in the, in the previous version of MPS nicely illustrates how more informat informative the dialogue has become. Okay, next I've got a real treat for you. The annotate functionality is already in MPS for quite a while, but we've been working on it heavily to make it better. You know, it associates nodes in your code with the most recent Git revision that had effect on that particular node. And in the left-hand side panel, you see um, you know, annotations with the corresponding revisions and in you know, a brief description of that, those revisions. Colors also help you distinguish revisions from one another. What is new in this release? Well, first, a minor thing that I already promised that you can actually click on links inside these tooltips. Um, but second, and more importantly, if you discover a commit that doesn't really contribute to your understanding of the code because it is perhaps uh, related to some migration or some code refactoring that, that is not really affecting the functionality that you're investigated, uh, investigating at that moment, you can hide that revision. Like these, this one, uh, you can go and hide it. So now it will be excluded from the, uh, from the revision and you'll see the actual change that had impact on that uh, on that node prior to the revision you've just hidden, and obviously you can go on and hide multiple uh, multiple such 
revisions. Now the revisions that have been re hidden are, are displayed here at the top so you can back enable them anytime. Here's another improvement. Now you know you've we've got the functionality to annotate a particular revision or annotate a previous revision. Now watch carefully what happens when I click that. And that's it, it's done. It's much faster than it used to be in previous versions. That's because the annotations are actually cached and you know the functionality can already use these caches as you navigate through the annotations. I think that's quite handy. Last but definitely not least, when you're resolving merge conflicts, now you can have a look at the details of the changes in either either branch before you make your decision about which changes to include in the result. So when you click that link, you get a pop-up with all the commits in that particular branch that differ from the other branch, and you can uh, you can look at the in impacted root nodes and see the changes in them. And obviously the same you can do for the other branch as well. Well, staying with the merge dialog, now something a little bit more tricky. I modified this piece of code into parallel branches. In both of the branches, this code has been wrapped in an if statement with identical condition. In the other branch, I added an additional statement right here. Well, in this branch, instead, I'll delete this line. So it's a combination of wrapping code and inserting or deleting code in two branches. And now I'll merge the branches together. Well, I admit the scenario where you add identical code into different branches, like the if statement with the condition here, that might be a bit artificial. But in reality, you might get into situations like that if you migrate two branches at the same time. Uh, the, the migrations might introduce the same code in both branches. So when you then merge the branches, you want to avoid unnecessary conflicts if the code is identical. And that's exactly what happens here. Let me show you. So here's the code in one of the branches, and now I'll go and merge it with the other branch. Okay, so let's edit the the conflicting file and now here we see the situation this is the original now we see that the code has been migrated now we see that the code has been wrapped in an if statement here and here and it's a non-colliding change because the if statements are identical in both branches although they've been introduced independently of one another and then the changes that are actually different is the one when in the branch on the left hand side this line has been deleted and in the branch on the right hand side this line has been added. So it seems like we can just have the, the changes resolved without any conflicts automatically and this is the final result. Now. To see how much we are getting here, we can change the algorithm to the old one, to the one used before, without tracking moved nodes. And this is what you get, a one giant collision that you are free to resolve by hand. Well, I don't know about you, but in my opinion, this is more useful. This is really a big one. A lot of effort has gone into implementing Kotlin in MPS. Now this is the result of the activity. You get all the syntax elements of Kotlin supported and you've got editor support with nice coloring, obviously usage highlighting, search for usages, 
go to definition navigation. So you can navigate around the usual way that you would in MPS code. Obviously you get code completion and all the other you know, side transformations and substitutions that make editing quite convenient. Well, if you look at the code carefully, you'll see that the classes dog and cat, they extend pet, which is defined right here. And this class itself extends animal. Well, if I navigate to that class, well, we'll see that's a base language class. You can see that you can mix and match base language code and Kotlin code together. There's still limits to that, but we're working on it because the goal is to have these two languages live next to one another and allow you to seamlessly cooperate between both. So now we've got these classes extend from the Java class, or override the method that's actually defined in that class, and we can even navigate there. Right, so here we call the method sound, which is defined in here in the Java in the base language class. And if we search for usages, we obviously see the usages, well, a usage from Kotlin code. You probably expect that you can run the code. So I'll run it just to prove that you're right. Here we go. So the code was run. In fact, you will see that there's a family of languages added that somehow relate to Kotlin. Languages and also solutions, so not only the language itself, but also runtimes and languages for integrating base language and Kotlin together. And also the standard library has been included so that all the classes you know from Kotlin are already available. And if you want to, you can add jar files with Kotlin code um, to your project. There's a new, root, uh, new model root called Kotlin Common, which allows you to add Kotlin code to your project. MPS will create stops for those models and then you can, mm, you can reference them from your code normally. If you investigate how the type system is implemented, you'll realize it's using the new MPS code rules type system that has been developed and made publicly available in this release as well. So you might also consider this Kotlin language implementation as a showcase for the code rules type system. These are all the major features in this release. I hope you enjoyed the video and you enjoy the features as well. Goodbye.